accessibility and why modern amps uh, should support it. So let's start with our agenda. And for today, we'll start speaking about what I previously mentioned, what is accessibility. Next one, we'll go through uh, main iOS accessibility features. Next one, we'll go through developer tools for accessibility. Uh, next, we'll continue with uh, what are accessibility attributes. And next, we'll go through best practices for designing iOS apps that support accessibility. We'll finish with some practical examples and useful links uh, at the end. And also, you could ask your questions also at the end. So I think we could start. And we will start. Sorry, I'm scrolling <laughs> a little bit forward. So we'll start with what is accessibility and why is it important? So accessibility is a concept to make information activities and our environment sensible, meaningful, and usable for people with disabilities. Also, accessibility allows people with a range of disabilities or environments to use their devices effectively and independently, thereby enhance their digital inclusion and access to information and communication technologies. The goal of accessibility is to enable all users to interact with their devices in a way that is comfortable and accessible to them, regardless of uh, their abilities or disabilities. So uh, next one, we are going with the reasons to support accessibility. And there are four of them right now. The first one is inclusivity. Supporting accessibility features ensures that individuals with disabilities can access and use iOS apps, promoting inclusivity and equal access to technologies for all users. It helps people with visual, hearing, matter, uh, cognitive impairments or disabilities to interact with and benefit from the app. The next one is legal requirements. In some regions, there are maybe legal requirements or accessibility standards that mandate the inclusion of accessibility features in software and applications, including the iOS apps. By supporting accessibility features, app developers can comply with those legal requirements and ensure that their apps is accessible to all users. We'll continue next with better user experience and uh, uh, Accessibility features such as clear and simple user interfaces, easy to read text, and intuitive navigation can benefit all users, not just uh, those with disabilities. By incorporating accessibility features, app developers can improve their overall user experience for all users. Next one, and let's here, is app quality. Uh, accessibility features are often require careful consideration of app design usability and performance, which can lead to overall better app quality. By incorporating accessibility features, app developers can ensure their app meets high standards of usability, robustness, and reliability. And uh, from here, we move in next to the second chapter, the main iOS accessibility features. So uh, by Apple divided it into four different directions. And those directions are vision, physical and motor, hearing, and some general. Uh, as you see here, there are different uh, features that are a part of those directions. As for vision, there are voiceover, zoom, display and text size, motion, spoken content, and others. For physical and motor, there are assistive touch, touch accommodations, backtap, reachability, and also others. And you can see for hearing one, they are Live listen, sound recognition, others, and general, there are guided access, theory, accessibility, shortcut, prop settings. Those, how they are divided into all sections by Apple by our side. So we'll continue next with the voiceover. So the voiceover is a screen reading tool which helps users interact with software without needing to see the screen. It is specifically designed for people with uh, vision problems. VoiceOver lets users who are visually impaired to hear and interact with what's visible on the screen. VoiceOver responds to gestures and uh, audibly communicates to users what's on the screen or what user selects. Uh, in essence, VoiceOver is a link between the UI and the user touch input. So you could uh, easily and quick access to VoiceOver by opening your settings up. Uh, on iOS device, select accessibility, next select accessibility shortcut, and toggle on the voiceover. And 
I think we should speak about how to use voice server. Mm. Voice server by default, it comes with uh, some kind of gestures to present that make it easier to navigate the app. So we see on this side uh, on the free of M, uh, those are common tab, uh, common gestures. So by a single tap anywhere on the screen, the voice over will read identified information from items, accessibility, attributes out loud. When you swipe left or right, voiceover will select the next visible element or the previous one if you select left uh, and read it also out loud. Uh, so it also have swipe gestures. When you, um, when you swipe uh, forward and down or left, swipes will go for the opposite side. So the next part of those uh, actions are uh, single swipe down. Uh, if you are if you're using a uh, high speech rate on your voiceover and some elements non you, you can't recognize, you could just uh, single swipe down for spell this focused element that of by letter. By double tapping on the element, uh, uh, it will select element nearest to this uh, double tap and we do, and it will also name this element for you once again. And by finger swipe horizontal or vertical, you could or scrolling on your the whole view from top to bottom or navigate in some horizontal stacks or horizontal scroll view from left to right. There are also additional actions, uh, and those additional actions I, I, I will only name them, not deep dive into them. For example, you could use your forefinger near the top or bottom of the screen to select the first item on the screen. To finger swipe down, uh, this will speak the entire screen from top to bottom, each elements it, it contains. <clears throat> uh, and for example, we also need to speak about uh, what is voiceover router. Voiceover router is a customizable tool that allows users to access a variety of voiceover features quickly and easily. Uh, to start using uh, this router, we need to uh, to finger rotation on our screen, and it will and it will allow us to use uh, this tool. Uh, the options that are available that are available and voice our router will include navigation options. You could just switch uh, to other heading structure, text editing options, uh, uh, settings such as speech rate, volume, and pitch. Media options such as audio descriptions and audio tracks, and also language options for multilingual users. Also, let's speak uh, quite little about other features for accessibility. You're probably already working with them. Uh, sorry, guys, I, I will just turn off my teams because it's too, too tough for me. Uh, okay, so I hope uh, you are not uh, hearing this sound. Um, so we will continue with Zoom. Zoom allows users to zoom in on any part of the screen to make it easier for people to see some text or some images uh, who has a low vision. Assistive Touch provides an alternative to using physical buttons on iOS device, making it easier to people with motion impairments to use their devices and support gestures. For example, Neil and I use uh, Assistive Touch to toggle on voiceover on or off. It is very helpful. Uh, display accommodations. This feature includes several options that can help users with visual impairments, such as ability to invert colors, reduce transparency, and use a grayscale display. Subtitle tools and closed captions. Uh, by default, iOS includes built in support for subtitles and closed captions, to make it easier for users with hearing impairments to enjoy videos and other multimedia content. So we are going next to the third chapter of our presentation, and this is developer tools for accessibility. And we should start with the main one, because uh, Apple provides uh, several tools for it, but we'll start with Accessibility Inspector. Uh, so what is it? And Accessibility Inspector is a tool that built into Xcode and allows developers to test and debug accessibility features in their apps. Developers can uh, use this to verify that their app user interface is accessible and to identify any accessibility issues that need to be addressed. 
So we'll continue with the functions of accessibility inspector. I divide it in, into two parts, but maybe you will really disagree in it. But let's go through them. So uh, as uh, of using accessibility inspector, you could uh, uh, run if you up and find common accessibility issues. It also allows you to check the accessibility attributes of your uh, elements in inspection mode. It, it helps and provides live preview of accessibility elements without leaving your app. It's a personal platform, including Mac OS, iOS, watch OS, and TV OS. Uh, and uh, some additional functions are, you could invert colors, increase contrast, reduce transparency, reduce motion, and change font sizes. Directly via this tool. And as a part of accessibility inspector, uh, Apple provides us inspection pointer. It is a powerful tool for debugging and troubleshooting code during development. Uh, this allows us to gain insights into the behavior of the code and identify the fix issues more efficiently. When you activate this pointer, we could just hover over any UI elements to check its attributes. You will speak about attributes later in this presentation. Um, also, uh, when, you, when we have like detailed pane that consists of uh, elements. The uh, pain of uh, inspection point and consists of basics. Uh, this displays the attribute properties for current highlighted element. Also, it consists of actions that lets us to perform actions like tapping a button or scrolling the view, presenting perform button, and this pain will perform the actions on our target. Uh, we also have uh, some information about element. It displays the class, others, and controller of current item. And uh, where are you? Uh, it shows our view in the our element in the view hierarchy to easily understand where it and uh, how the, how our view is built. Also, as uh, a tool for accessibility development, we could use the bar hierarchy because we could understand what element in which, in which position. Uh, sometimes. Uh, we need to uh, dig a little bit deeper to understand how things are layered in our debug uh, in, in our application, and we need to debug it via debug hierarchy. Also, accessibility inspector provide a tool that calls audit. Uh, with this tool, mm -hmm. we could uh, just uh, review the current application screen and uh, uh, see the results. Uh, of each elements on the screen, and is it accessible or is it not accessible? Eliminated all errors and warnings uh, that are results of uh, uh, audit functionality of uh, accessibility inspector uh, doesn't guarantee a perfectly accessible app, but it's a good start for doing something with accessibility. Mm. By using all those previously named developer tools, uh, we could ensure that our apps are fully accessible to users with disabilities and provide much more inclusive user experience. So we are going next to the next uh, chapter of our presentation. What are accessibility attributes? We have spoke a little bit about them previously. So the accessibility attributes in iOS are properties that can be added to user interface elements to make them more accessible to users with disabilities. Those attributes provide additional information to assistive technology such as voiceover, so they can accurately describe the user interface elements to uh, users with disabilities. So uh, let's deep dive into them and discuss some parts of it. So the first one is accessibility label. This attribute is used to provide a brief description of user interface element. It is read by voiceover to help users with visual impairments understand that the, what the element does. The next one is accessibility value. This attribute is uh, used to provide the current value of the user interface element. For example, if you are using slider, we could indicate via this attribute the current position of the slider. Next one is accessibility hint. 
This attribute is uh, used to provide additional information about how to interact with the user interface element. It is read by voiceover after the accessibility labor and can provide useful context for users with disabilities. Next one here, and the last on this page, is accessibility trait. Maybe probably to call R and this is traits. Uh, this attribute is uh, used to define the type of user interface element and its behavior. For example, a button can be defined as a button trait to indicate that it is an interactive and it should be activated by some uh, further actions. Uh, also, we could speak about uh, those, the element. Uh, this attribute uh, is used to provide the brief description of user uh, in interface element. So priority determines the order in which voiceover reads out elements to the user. For example, if you need to, uh, first of all, uh, name something in the top of the screen and next in the bottom and next in the middle. Uh, accessibility focused. This attribute is very useful for your accessibility apps. And it is it used to indicate whatever review is currently focused for accessibility purposes. And the last one is the favorite for testers is accessibility uh, for tests uh, is accessibility identifier. Uh, it is it provides a unique identifier for a view, and we could access all UI tests via it. Also, we should speak about accessibility action. Uh, this attribute uh, uh, adds an action to a view. Uh, those actions allow assistive technologies such as voiceover to interact with the view by invoking this action. And this is all from uh, accessibility attributes and we are continuing with the best practices for designing iOS apps uh, that are supports accessibility. So designing iOS apps that are accessible to our users is important for creating and inclusive user experience. Uh, and so here are some best practices for it. The first one, use clear and concise language. Clear and concise language is essential for creating accessibility content, as it ensures that everyone, including uh, those with cognitive or language disabilities, can understand the message being conveyed. Uh, and so next, I will name some best practices for providing this. So we should use uh, simple words and sentence structure. Uh, we should use simple everyday language that is easy to understand. Avoid uh, to use jargon or technique terms. Or if must use it, we, we need to provide some clear explanations why, why we are we using it. Second one is that we need to use active voice because uh, when we are using active voice instead of passive voice, it is easier to understand uh, what makes the message more concise. Uh, the next one uh, in this option is uh, uh, we should uh, use short paragraphs and sentences. Because if you are breaking our content into the short paragraphs and sentences, uh, this, this will make our app much more easier to understand and read. And we should also avoid to use uh, long blocks of text, text because uh, that can be our handling. We should also provide contents and uh, examples uh, to help users understand complex, com complex concepts. Also, we should avoid uh, using abbreviations or acronyms unless they are widely understood. So from there, we are going to the second one, uh, to use high contrast colors. When we're designing uh, for accessibility, it is important to consider the contrast between foreground and background colors. This is because individuals with visual impairments, such as color blindness or low vision, they may have difficulty distinguishing between colors with low contrast. Uh, and next, uh, I will name some good practices for it. First of all, we definitely need to use high contrast colors. Use colors that have high contrast ratio between foreground and background. This means using colors that are an opposite ends, for example, like uh, black and white, dark blue and light yellow. This is good to, to make this. Um, next one is to use uh, contrast checkers. Uh, we are, we could use um, uh, 
widely presented tools uh, to ensure our color choices meet the minimum contrast ratio uh, for requirements for accessibility. And the recommended contrast ratio for body, for example, for body text, at least should be uh, 4.5 to 1. And for the larger text, such as headings, it should be at least 3 to 1. We should also avoid using color alone to convey meaning. When we're using color to convey meaning, we also use additional use such as text labels, patterns, or icons. For example, instead of using green to indicate some success and red to indicate failure, we could combine those colors with a check mark or like a X symbol to make it easier to color brand users to understand this message. We should also use uh, shadows and outlines because when we add a shadow or outline to a text or icon, it improves their contrast against the background. The next one here is to provide the alt text. Uh, Added alternative text uh, descriptions for images will help users with visual impairment to understand what is being displayed because a lot of decor images are provided by your application, but you are not naming it. By default, uh, iOS system will uh, try to pronounce it as what it sees on it, but uh, it is very, <laughs> very less cases that uh, it could be done properly. So try to make some copy and create some good alt texts for the car images, not only for uh, the action one, like buttons and so on. Next part of those best practices are use accessible navigation. So to ensure that your app, app's navigation is easy to understand and use, you need to ensure that your app's navigation is easy to understand and use. You should use clear and concise labels for buttons, links, and other interactive elements. Also, you should definitely use uh, semantic headings tags. For example, like heading one, heading two, etc., or maybe like uh, its header, accessibility modifier trait to convey the hierarchical structure of your content, because that's definitely will help uh, people with disabilities to navigate inside your app content more easily. You should test your app with assistive technologies. Test your app with assistive technologies such as voiceover and switch control to ensure that users with disabilities can use your app effectively. Provide some customizable settings. When you offer customizable settings that allows users to adjust text, size, colors, shims, and other elements to suit their individual needs, it will be much more easier for them to use your app and they will really uh, like it because it is much more easier for them. Also, you need to consider internalization and localization. Uh, ensure that your app supports multiple languages and the all text is properly translated and displayed for all users around the world. So we are continuing next with uh, some uh, practical examples. I created them by using Swift UI. So, but uh, you are not limited only on it. You could use it via UI kit and so on, but with some other experience. So, in this window, we have a right side presentation of how, for example. Uh, the, car, uh, the general way of using accessibility modifiers, because every trait we are previously spoke with you about, it is represented by separate accessibility modifier by system by default. And on the top uh, example, you could see how it done with all accessibility elements. And uh, on the bottom side, I hope you see my mouse. I, if not, sorry for it. Uh, on the bottom side, you could see that you could just combine all of those into only one accessibility modifier, modifier and provide some default water for some cases if you don't need to use them. On this screen, uh, we see how accessibility inspector is looked like. On the right side, we saw how inspection pointer works. This is the target button on the top right corner. When we select some element, this would give us basics with what is the labor of this element? What is the value? What is the traits, for example? What is the identifier hint and so on? You could perform an action 
if it's set up by uh, us previously. Also, we have understanding on uh, where element exists and where is it exists in the view hierarchy of the whole app. And as you see on the small screenshot on the left, sorry, me because I'm not a PowerPoint person <laughs> who who doing uh, good presentations, but I try to give you some knowledge that I have. Uh, you could run audit and you could see that the size of this element is too small. This is uh, doing by default uh, by the system. Uh, it says that stoppable area is too small and it is real hard for users to tap it with the high, uh, with the large pinnacles like I do. Uh, okay, so next we are spoke with you about accessibility focus. Uh, accessibility focus state for SwiftUI is something different with the general uh, focus state. Uh, because as on my practice, I find uh, sometimes that uh, when user using voiceover and uh, he or she selects uh, some element, it will not trigger general focus state, but it will definitely trigger accessibility focus state. And this uh, example you could see we have like a button with some state where it's toggled by the action. And then it will toggle, it will call to your model with, uh, uh, with change of notification that uh, screen has changed. Not, uh, we could typically use uh, view has changed when you're using UI kit but this is not uh, a good option for SwiftUI views as for my experience. So uh, this will just change the trigger and uh, uh, the view you want to be accessibility focused will select. And uh, for example, it is useful when you press the button on the screen and then the task is appear on the bottom of the screen and you want to change the focus for accessibility users on this task to be named and to make some decisions if, if there are some buttons to, to course. Uh, so in the next one, we are speaking with you about combining elements into one. Uh, as we are previously spoke with you, we have accessibility element as a, a separate modifier. And it goes with um, uh, his children option. And those options are free to contain, to combine and to ignore. I think guess that if you are select ignore, this will just ignore all the elements inside the parent, parent view. All child views will not pronounce and so on. But the parent element will be uh, as a selectable option, but without any descriptors. So we need, if we are doing so with ignore option, we need to uh, force cast some uh, labors, values, etc for this element to for it to be identifiable for accessibility users. And here, for example, uh, on this example, we are using accessibility element uh, change or contains. And in this particular example, this element will be naming like header descriptor without some uh, image label, because as you see, accessibility hidden status set to true for image and it will not co contain into the parent element. By default, if you create uh, without ch children, uh, uh, while a uh, ch children option to accessibility element, it will create a totally new element. This not related to this view child views. Also, we'll, I want to speak with you about some dynamic types. So, uh, what is dynamics types? This is the range of uh, type sizes that can be scaled by the system. And as you see on those examples, we set uh, dynamic type sizes from array from small to accessibility one. And when I select on the second screen, dynamic type to, uh, not, not to select, uh, it totally not, not selected at all because that was up. Uh, the size of the label and description is stay where I program, programmatically set to them. But when I start to scale, it start to increase their size and spread into 
into the container of it. And as you see here, I select accessibility free dynamic type sites, but I, I don't uh, allow it by the system. So this is one is a representation of accessibility one scale size. And we are here. This is our conclusion. So uh, let's speak about it. Implementation, uh, implementing accessibility in our app shows that we are willing to get for extra mile for every user. And this is a really good thing. So if we are working on some government agency or some apps that should be uh, accessible for all users by requirements, we also need to implement those accessibility components. Uh, designing our apps for accessibility make it easier to write functional tests whenever test from test framework we are using. And it also feels uh, good to know that we are making a small but noticeable difference for someone's life. So here you are have access to useful links where I definitely used when I create this presentation and they're really useful. And from my own experience, I want to share with you my life example because when I start my developer career, I work with the person with uh, several roles, spell uh, Ukrainian language. Uh, and uh, this was uh, totally cool from him not to only use applications on the phone, but he created applications. He was a Unity, and he even now a Unity developer who create cool applications, and those applications are accessible but by a huge range of people with disabilities and without. So uh, as for me, uh, and where I want to share with you this presentation, it is very easy to uh, support accessibility features in your applications. But when you do this little thing, uh, each, each day of your development developer life, you will make uh, some person's life much more easier and they will be really appreciated. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, you could ask them.